Hey everyone, Chris here. Um, back from Montreal now, so we can uh, start uh, up where we left off. So, just a reminder where we left off. We left off, we were going to set up the game object class. Now, when I was away, I realized that we actually need to set up a transform class. So, I've already uh, started out with the basic here. I just uh, added a new class, called it transform, and uh, set it up here. And we're going to need to include, well, we don't really need to include anything yet for this, but we're going to come back to this. But right now we just need the basic outline of the transform class so that we can uh, reference it in game object. So first thing we're going to have to do in uh, game object here is we're going to need to include a transform. There, so we have that component. And we should probably actually set up in transform so that it uh, actually inherits properly. Let's set that up just so we don't have to worry about that later on. There we go, we'll come back and add the math classes and stuff in there later. All right, so let's head over to the game object class and start by setting up the constructors. Now, I know the last video was really long, so I'm gonna try and keep this shorter and break it up a little better. So we're just gonna get right to this. So the constructor, the default constructor, is really straightforward to set up. We're just gonna initialize a bunch of empty values here. Uh, for stuff or default values, I guess, because it's not really an empty string here. I'm going to set up the tag next. And that's just going to be, that will be an empty string. Uh, set up the parent. We'll just set the parent to null. And we're going to do the same thing for the transform, which we haven't actually added yet now that I think about it. So we need to go over quickly and add that. And that's why we added the uh, transform class because we're going to be using it a fair bit throughout this game object because all game objects have a transform class default component so that the user doesn't have to worry about adding a transform component and all that stuff will automatically be handled since that's the core component for any object. So getting that added is important in handling that without having to have the user rely on setting up a transform component for every game object. It'll also make if we implement an editor because it's already in the object, we won't have to worry about having the user add an object to the scene, then make sure the object is properly set up. The object can automatically be placed in the scene as long as it has a transform component. So now we're going to set up the uh, not default constructor. And this is uh, just same as all the other stuff. We just take L name and replace it over where we set the game object. And that's about it for the constructors. Uh, we don't need anything in the deconstructor right now. Uh, although we will probably have stuff in there later. So we're just going to set up the create of the object now. And this, this will be run when the object is uh, added to the scene graph, which is another class we will go over later. But right now, this just so you know, this is where that's going to be called. So we're just going to create a local transform. And everything is pointers, as I said, for now. We're not worrying about dealing with uh, better memory management for the moment, other than we're just going to make sure we delete all our pointers properly as we go through. I'm just going to copy and paste here to save some time. We're going to set the game object of the transform to this. Then we're going to Call the function from the uh, component manager, which I believe we already set up. Oh, well, it appears we didn't actually set that up. So I guess we're going to have to go set that up and then come back to this. So I'm just going to pause the video here and we'll be back and we'll be ready to set up the component manager. All right, and we're back. Uh, I'm just going to work on the component head or the component manager header for now. We'll worry about implementing stuff once we have all the functions set up. Uh, but for now, we're just going to write the header. 
So I've already uh, set up the basic stuff here. So set up the uh, the defines. I included components, so we have that in there. And now we're just going to go ahead and set up the variables for this. So we're going to go back and we're going to use some uh, type defs as well. And actually, if you want to save time, I'm actually just going to copy the type defs over from our uh, game object class. And then we're just going to edit those so I don't have to type everything. Again, so the component one can actually stay the same. Now we're going to add another one, and this is going to be renderer. And the renderer is another component I inherited, and we're just going to jump over to that right now. So the renderer component is just a, a component that inherits off component, and all this is, is this is going to have a special function, and this function is just going to be called render. So this function render here is going to be so that we can differentiate between when a component has a renderable component and not a renderable component, because we don't have interfaces in C sharp or sorry in C++ like we would have in C sharp or something where we could do I renderable or something. So in this, this is the really the simplest way to put forward to create a renderer. We just create a subclass of component that all renderable components will inherit from and then we can just do a typecast to see if they will work. See if they are a renderable component. And it's a little slow but it's not terribly slow because it does use a dynamic cast. So now we're going to uh, create two uh, vectors here with our type defs. We create one called components. And we're just going to rename this second type def so that it's render component vector. We'll get there. There. There we go. And we're just going to call this M render components. Now we're just going to create three integer variables and these variables will be useful for uh, basically resizing the arrays to start with or resizing the vector to start with so that we're not constantly resizing them because what happens is a vector it starts out very small and then as you more add more items it grows bigger and bigger with every item in there but we want to set it to a nice big block size at first so that when, if you're making a small game with only maybe a couple hundred objects, it's never actually going to resize on you and you won't have that lag overhead other than when you start up the engine. So that's good. Um, and it will resize automatically as well. We will work on that. And we did talk about that when we were looking at stuff. So we'll just create these three here. Um, as I said earlier, component size is the... Uh, current component size or sorry is the current size of the vector that's component size actually there let's just fix that then the current component size so let's go back here because I'm getting confused so the comp current component size is the number of components that are currently the space available the component size is the size we want to increment the vector by every time we run out of space and then our last one here which is m current component count and I can't spell here okay that's why it's on the computer and this one here m current component count is the current number of components in actually in the system Alright, so that's it for the variables here. Now we're just going to set up a bunch of function prototypes. First one we're going to have is going to uh, add a component. And this is just going to take a component pointer. And it will also return the component added. And this will be more useful later. Right now we don't really need this since we're just passing pointers around. But later on, it's useful to return the object also being added. Uh, if you want to return that memory location as a pointer if you weren't storing it as a pointer but since we're storing it as a pointer it doesn't really matter for now but it's we'll use that later if we get there so now we're going to remove have a function for removing the component and this is just going to return a bool if the component was removed and this is also going to take a component vector uh, const iterator so rather than actually passing component, we're going to pass an iterator around. 
and this will be useful because this ties in with the next function we're going to write which is avoid it, it removes components uh, it removes components with the uh, with the game object so associated with with a particular game object and this is going to take a game object pointer and this will be useful if we want to clean up all the components associated with a single game object rather than having to go through and remove each component by hand just fix up that spelling there because uh, totally mess that up there so it's remove component with game object and well because of that we're also going to need to go back up to the top here and we're going to include game object and there we go so there's some of the functions here we're also going to add in our uh, fixed update and such like that. If we actually go over to component here, we can actually just grab the fixed update, update and late update and just paste that in here because that's all that is. This is just all the updates happen through here. And there seems to be, oh, forgot the dot h there. I want to forget that. Especially if I can get the dot in there and also to include renderer so we have that in there and no more errors they're gone now uh, now we're just going to set up avoid uh, render and this is the uh, special function that will only be called on the uh, on the uh, renderer components and we can actually get rid of the virtual here because these are not virtual functions they don't need to be inherited at all and we're going to set up a void resize components and this is where we're going to resize our vector when we need to so we're not we're the uh, the idea is we're never actually going to let the vector automatically resize itself so now we're going to go in and we're going to set up the singleton components of uh, this. So let's just put a quick comment here. And we're going to uh, just uh, label a singleton implementation. And for some reason, the keyboard is a little slow there and not actually picking up on input. I'm not really sure why that is. Uh, let's go with it. Hopefully, it won't be too bad. I'll just run a save there. Make sure. So we're going to create a static component manager, and this will be a pointer. And we're just going to label it M instance. I guess it's really not mem M, so it actually should be S because it's a static. It doesn't actually. Uh, change from instance to instance. Now we're going to create a static inline component manager return type and this is just going to be called get instance. It doesn't need any parameters there and then we're just going to implement it here. So we're going to check to see if the uh, instance is uh, equal to null and if the instance is equal to null we are going to uh, create a new component manager and then at the end here we're just going to return the instance and so that's the basic there for that we're also going to create a static function uh, which is inline and bool and this is just going to be called exists we're going to implement this as well and this is just going to return the instance if it's not equal to zero which is the same as null um, I'm just writing that way so you can see the different ways so we're going to take a quick break here and then I'll be back 
All right, so we're back now. No, I just checked the timing on this episode, and we're coming up to 15 minutes now, so I'm going to cut the episode right here so we're not getting too long. And uh, in the next episode, we'll come back and look at the uh, game object in setting uh, and finishing setting that up, and then we'll come back and do the component manager if we have time. All right, so I'll see you next time.